from Wyoming, a story about a teacher who taught a student how to read his first book, but also teaches kids what it means to have a family and a community. To our next story, this one from Omaha, Nebraska, about a young man who had his prayers answered from despair to hope and ultimately community leadership by another caring and consistent adult. As I uh, graduated from college and started my career, as I traveled around the country, one of the things I noticed was the disparities. You know, on one side of the road, you would have shotgun houses. On the other side, you'd have uh, mansions, brick mansions. So as I really looked harder at the data, the amazing disparities that I'd seen across the country was even more extreme here in Omaha. And I just had the question of, is that right? Is that the way it's supposed to be? It started with three of us just having a conversation about what are the trends, what's really going on, and that went from three to seven of us having that conversation and then eventually 10 and eventually 70 of us um, as we gathered information and went around in my car really listening to what are the issues and realizing that there's no way that one individual organization will solve this by themselves. We decided to take on the challenge. Could we really make measurable, tangible change in our community if we worked in a more collective way? One of the biggest things that the Empowerment Network is known for is bringing individuals and organizations together, uh, building a common vision and a mission. A big piece of that is we recognize we need to put more intense focus on our African-American young men. These are individuals that when they're in ninth and 10th grade, many, you know, it really, there are strong indications that they were not on the right path. And they've been redirected through coaching, through support, through employment opportunities. The role modeling, the mentoring, making sure that we have uh, men in front of these young guys that they can see what they can be. One of the things I'm most excited about is the young men, the incredibly talented young men that we have in our community. And one example is uh, Byron. Uh, he's with the Bannister Leadership Academy and I've watched him and his uh, abilities to show young people about leadership and his facilitation skills, the passion, and the, uh, he's one of the most incredible young men I've ever seen. So I'm excited to see um, that he is finally being recognized in this community for what he is currently doing. But his uh, potential, he's just in the beginning phases of what the, he's, the impact that he's going to have on this community. He is a dynamic young man, absolutely incredible. My uh, story is one you know, of hope, uh, the importance of uh, somebody stepping in to intervene you know, in, the, in the lives of you know, uh, our youth you know, to help them to, to be successful and um, definitely a story of a second chance, a second opportunity at life. And uh, I just want to uh, spread that back into the community where I came from as well. Product of a single parent home, if I could probably describe my childhood in uh, one word, it would probably be uh, unstable. I just kind of coasted through high school. Uh, D's, you know, C's were fine with me. I actually got involved with um, uh, smoking marijuana and also drinking alcohol. When I first met Byron, he really wasn't receiving of any uh, man in his life. So it took a long time for me to even to gravitate the relationship and cultivate the relationship. Yeah, he maybe went the wrong way and did things he shouldn't have done, but at the end of the day, he wanted to change. He just needed someone to push him to change. Wasn't really taught, you know, that you can make an honest living you know, that's all I was around was just a lot of the negative role models that the community can provide for young kids. I always believed in God. And, you know, before, even when I was doing all that stuff, I would still wake up and pray in the morning and things like that. And, and one night, it was just like a prayer that came from my heart. I just asked God to bring somebody into my life um, that can help me out. If I don't change now, I don't know what's going to end up happening to me. So. Uh, from there, he brought uh, Mr. Bannister. Bannister Leadership Academy was established through my two cousins who were murdered, Tyrone Bannister in 2007, uh, through gang violence, and con recently controlled Bannister in 2010 uh, through gang violence as well. My wife and I started the organization back in 2007. We had a vision uh, to empower youth through leadership. We just didn't know what type of leadership. So we did advocacy, leadership and advocacy. So we wanted to incorporate the historical so they can understand their history. And then we established uh, leadership through historical enrichment. And then we also thought about uh, athletics and teaching about team building activities. And of course, our academic is always our first priority. 
And then right now it's gone, it grown from here, from 2010 to 2014, and we're serving about 250 families. Byron was about 14 years old. It was a learning adjustment for myself. Byron was very disrespectful. Uh, Byron really couldn't receive anything I, anything I told him. Uh, it took about two years to even for him to trust me. Definitely one of the um, biggest success successes that I've had since meeting Mr. Bannister was just being able to understand the importance of setting expectations for yourself. Um, you know, wanting to achieve highly and be successful. Um, one of the things he taught me was the importance of education um, and the importance of having that educational background in order to be successful at the next level. So currently I'm in college right now at Metro, uh, taking classes towards my liberal arts degree. And um, I just really feel like that is really something that he's helped me out with, so. I definitely want to leave a uh, legacy that um, just really gives hope to the hopeless. I mean, because hope is really the, the key to my whole life being changed. You know, when you reach a point in life where you feel like you have no hope and somebody steps in and provides that hope for you, because hope is like something that, it's like, it's like something that sparks life in people, you know? Um, so I, I just want an opportunity to get myself elevated into a position where I can actually go back to where I came from and help other people come out the same way I came out. We often hear the statistics about what's happening to our young men and where they are. One of the things that we forget is no matter whether they're in poverty or currently unemployed, every single one of them has incredible potential. And we have to stop underestimating what they can do because of their environment, because their story after story. I think of some of the young men that have been a part of this initiative over the last few years. And they came from very difficult circumstances, things that we can't even imagine, but they overcame it, they were resilient, and that's what we have to understand and send that message. No matter where you started, you have the ability to achieve your dreams. Make sure you understand your strengths. Make sure you understand what your, talent, you know, what your talents and gifts are and that we need as a community to come around our young men and young women to help them reach their highest potential. That's the key message. That is the key, and as Jack Welch put it, before you are a leader, success is all about growing yourself. When you are a leader, success is all about growing others.